Hello, people of the internet. My name is Preston, programmer here at Leafy Games. And I'm George, the artist, and today we're releasing Beta 29. There's a lot of big things in this update, so let's dive in. First off, uh, we've finally added the system for Lost Colony data fragments. We've talked about this a few times, and so some of you may be aware, but in case you aren't, the general gist is you need a certain amount of these fragments in order to actually reach the Lost Colony. They're scattered throughout the game. Many of the events, major mission lines, all sorts of things will eventually be granting them in this update in particular. Um, and uh, you only need a certain amount, so that helps replayability um, for multiple runs to the Lost Colony. Uh, just to be clear one more time, the Lost Colony isn't in yet, but this is the last thing, last real feature we needed before we could properly introduce all that stuff. So be on the lookout for that in the future. It's also worth mentioning that some of the Lost Colony data fragments grant passive bonuses to your ship. Sort of like a uh, story-ish progression of, so of sorts. For example, if you win the racing uh, Lost Colony fragment for completing the ion races, you have a permanent boost to your uh, ship thrusters. Also, for Beta 29, we were doing quite a lot of updates in the AI department. We're introducing a new set of updated default priorities for your crew bots. The game should pop up with a message asking you to overwrite those. We strongly recommend you do, otherwise you won't get access to all these new features. And in fact, your AI might be a little kind of busted if you attempt to, to bring it in here because it just wouldn't be compatible. So definitely overwrite those to the new de defaults. We've also introduced new overrides, new custom events for the override system that allows you to uh, customize the bots and their behaviors in even more ways. So, let's go over some of the individual bots and some of their new capabilities. To start with, let's go for the Eng bot. First of all, they are a little bit more effective overall at their power management. They can manage a reactor safely and get a little bit more juice overall out of it now. They can now lower shields for repair. You can now manage the aux reactor. Also, they can now manage core stability if the reactor safety is off. They can even overclock the reactor in certain uh, circumstances. They can eject the reactor core if it starts to go critical. And they can now initiate a manual program recharge. These are all controlled with uh, the same AI priority system as always, so feel free to go in there and customize that. The Cybot has a few new behaviors and tweaks as well. Programs and viruses now are more uh, in line with what the AI priority system is providing. This means that the behaviors are now almost fully controlled exclusively by those overrides. There's no more built-in behaviors built-in Cybot uh, behavior that you have to contend with. Now it's all through the priorities, so you get to fully customize when they use those programs. The weapon bot can now launch nuclear devices. Definitely check that out in the uh, AI priorities if you're looking to do that. The weapon bot can now choose uh, also missile types based on the AI priorities. Based on the installed missiles, you can now select how they should choose which missile to fire uh, before they fire it, so they could be more effective about choosing the right missile. Laser turrets can now also automatically shoot down missiles um, and nukes uh, that are targeting your ship as well. One last thing, uh, some additions for the PiBot as well. They now have the ability to fly into long-range warp stations automatically when they line up, and their general flying and patrol patterns should be more natural and interesting. In addition, uh, we've added a new area, a new sector, called the High Rollers Station, which specializes in Liar's Dice gambling tournaments. Um, this is a new way to earn the one of the aforementioned uh, data fragments. If you manage to uh, win at the final table of these uh, uh, Liar's Dice NPCs playing the game, then uh, you'll earn yourself a, a data fragment that has a cool thematic effect. In addition, we've had a host of improvements and tweaks to space combat. We've added beacons that can now spawn, at, especially at higher chaos levels. 
These add sector-wide effects to all ships in the sector. For example, there's a thrust booster beacon, which doubles the overall thrust that every ship in the sector produces. And um, so it becomes your decision to either leave the beacon alive to keep that effect, knowing that your enemies will also get that effect, or destroy the beacon to remove the effect from the sector and fight them normally. It can even be the case that multiple beacons can spawn stacking their effects. So do be on the lookout for those and make sure you check out which beacons are in your sector before you finalize your plans because they can change up your strategy a little bit. And, uh, and we hope you enjoy it, uh, the variety and sort of dynamicness that that adds to ship combat. In addition, we've added something called a faction battles, which we think adds a nice dynamic effect and feeling to the whole galaxy. These are essentially sectors that when you warp in, a battle is already taking place. Uh, these battles can be between uh, bandits and the CU territories, WD and bandits, and CU, WD, and infected. The number of faction battles increases as chaos increases, and a small percentage of them actually will show up on your star map as distress beacons. Speaking of distress beacons, Ships now have the ability to broadcast distress signals when they're uh, in trouble. This could potentially lead uh, more ships into the fight if you don't take care of them fast enough. In, in, uh, indeed, ships can now warp in to a fight based on yeah, another ship with a distress signal, and they can even warp out by charging their warp drive and engaging that at low health. So this means you could miss out on a ship kill if they get away or... Um, so it's up to you to try to manage that type of system. They can now, they now uh, sort of can flee for their lives if they don't think they're gonna win. So they're a little more, we think it yeah, makes them more alive, more dynamic and uh, overall gives them kind of the same capabilities as you. So we, we always like when we can do that. In addition, uh, we, have, we have a new sector type for space combat called uh, cluttered sectors or asteroid fields. These are just simply large cluttered asteroids that fill the space and sort of require pybots and players to weave through them. Um, we think this might add an, an interesting layer to combat in general. Indeed. And all uh, mega turrets now come equipped with a pulse laser, uh, sort of an alternate fire that activates when you tap the fire missile button or press Q uh, if on a keyboard. This will instantly activate the pulsed laser, which is a small beam that doesn't require any charging, but does add some heat to your turret. This allows you to sort of instantly react and shoot down most likely a missile or potentially try to damage a nuke um, while you're in the turret without relying on, especially in a mega turret, a very large charge time um, or just not being able to shoot down missiles at all in a main turret. Um, so we. This makes it so, yeah, every weapon specialist, we hope, will now be able to kind of participate in shooting down missiles and that side of space combat, which we think is pretty fun. So we're happy about that. In addition, uh, because now there's way more abilities to shoot down missiles, we decided to make missiles a little pack a bit more punch. They're faster to lock on, they're faster to reload, and generally they'll be dealing more damage. Indeed, they're very deadly now. So, and some of their specific effects are more are stronger now. For example, the shield piercer will really tear through shields and a few things like that. So definitely worth checking those out. Uh, we've also made some changes to sensors. Uh, in general, we've actually uh, we rarely do this, but we've reduced some of the sensor capabilities. We've removed life forms, quantum, and radiation, and we're just focusing on EM. We think generally that's more streamlined and it's really what the game was doing anyways. Um, we've also added the ability for scientists to scan life forms on ships. This will give you insight into the, uh, the crew members aboard that ship, what their health is, and what item they're using, which might give you an indication of what's going on in the ship. Is it full of fires? Are, they, are the da systems damaged? That sort of thing. In addition, you can also scan for programs. And finally, uh, we've done a pass on visuals for ship combat in general. We've added a uh, whole smoke for damaged ships, so they'll be sort of uh, emitting the smoke. It's sort of a visual indicator that uh, you've dealt a lot of damage, and it can happen to your ship as well. 
Also, uh, when ships are dealt hull damage, pieces of debris can fall off as well as sparks. Uh, sparks can also appear inside. They don't damage you, but they're just more of a constant reminder that your ship is on the brink of uh, being destroyed, which we think is fun. And we've also tweaked the look of the shields to make them a little more interesting. And yeah, those are the major changes. And uh, oh, as always, make sure to check out the release notes for the full, complete list of every detail. And uh, and yeah, thank you for watching. We also hope that you all stay safe and healthy out there. Yep. And uh, we hope you enjoy the update. Thanks for watching. <laughs>